Jesus, we honor you, Lord. We exalt you, who is like unto thee, O God. Glorious in holiness and fearful in praises. Immortal, invisible God, the only wise God, the great I am that I am, the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. El Shaddai, Elohim, Adonai, we worship you tonight, O God. We give you praise, O God. We honor you, Jesus. Come on, just lift up your hands and just worship your maker. Just say sweet words to him. Tell him how much you love him. He's a merciful God. He's faithful. He's faithful. He's a righteous God. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it into it and we are saved. Yes, Lord, we worship you. We exalt you, O oh God. We magnify you, O oh God. Yes, Lord, you're worthy. You're worthy. We worship you, Jesus. We honor you,
Strong deliverer, beginning and 
and we say you are good hallelujah you are good sing you are good you are good hallelujah Allowing you to see Hallelujah. another new month. Just bless his name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless his name. Hallelujah. For he's been good. Thank you, Lord. We sing hallelujah to his name. Bless your holy name, Lord. For there is none beside you. We welcome you, Lord, in this place. This is your house, this is your home, we welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, it's your I am the 
just bless his name. The one who all glory and honor in his due. The one who is worthy of the lifting of our hands, the bowing of our hearts. Be all glory and honor. We join the angels and sing to you, Lord.
life and faith to your children. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. Thank you so very much, Company of Praise. Hallelujah. So like I said this morning, you know, talking about the strong tower from Psalm chapter 61, from verse 1 says, hear my cry, O God, and give attention to my prayers. He says, hear my cry, O God, and give attention to my prayers. And that is what this is all about. It's about our prayers. Praise the Lord. He says, hear my cry, O God. Give attention to my prayers. He says, from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. A rock that is higher than I. And the next verse says, verse 3. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. And that's who God is. He's a strong tower from our enemy. Praise the Lord. I don't know if it's the same for you that God is a strong tower from all your enemies. 
And that's what it's meant to be. He says, Hear my cry, O Lord, attain unto my prayer from the ends of the earth. Will I cry unto you? He says, When my heart is overwhelmed, man, you see, this, this generation of people and this season and this time that we are in, you can see that there are loads of things that come against us that get us to a place where we are overwhelmed. The situations and circumstances, whether it's at work, whether it's in the family, you discover that so many things are coming to you that, you know, I mean, you cannot understand. You can't unravel. You, you just, they, they are bigger than you, you know. At times, some of these things that you think you have done everything that Scripture says you should do, but you can't understand. David got to a place, he said, Why so downcast, O my soul? You know, why are thou disquiet within me? Why are you, you know, cast down, O my soul? Why are you, you know, you get to a place, says, why are you disquiet within me? He says, up down in God. I don't know if you've ever gotten to the place. You just sit down. You just you don't know what to do. You don't know how to do it. You don't know how to, you just don't know how to handle the situations and circumstances around you. And when you get to that place, you know, you're overwhelmed. Anything and everything at that point can put you down. Anything and everything at that point. That's where you see some people, you know, I mean, you know, you just see, they just become quick-tempered. You know, they, they transfer aggression. That's, what is happening is not the, the, the cause of you know, their reaction. You see them reacting, not because of what their husband has said or what the wife has said. It's just transfer aggression. They are overwhelmed. They don't know how to handle the present situation. And so that's why David cried. He says, hear my cry, O Lord. Attend to my, to, to, to my prayers. He says, from the end of the earth will I cry unto you. He says, when my heart is overwhelmed, he says, please lead me to a rock. It has to be a place that is higher. God has to take you to a place that is higher than the place that you are in. And you must, that's the reason why you must understand what the strong tower is. Today, it might not just be the tower like you see it. You know, in Israel, they have um, bunkers, you know, safe places. When they hear the siren go, going off, they know there is trouble and everybody begins to run. The bunkers are not always very far from them. They run into it to hide. When there are bombs, you know, and missiles thrown at you, them. You, you must have that place, that safe place. You must have that safe place. When situations and circumstances of life, they come against you. A lot of us don't have that safe place. A lot of us just don't understand. I said it is all about prayers. You don't know what to do when the situation happens. And so when the Bible talks about the strong tower, it says, that has been a shelter unto me and a strong tower from my enemy. Psalm 61 verse 3. It says, you've been a shelter and a strong tower from the enemy, from all my enemies. That's what you have been. You must have that place you can run to. You know, sincerely, every time I watch, you know, the news and I see that, that, that siren going off, you know, it signals a thing, and the people of the children of Israel run. In most countries have that. A place where you can run to. Do you have a place where you run to when there is trouble? Do you have a place to run to? A lot of people don't. Some of us pray. You don't know. And that's why when, you know, Solomon, Solomon had learned so much from his father, and he says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Proverbs 18, verse 10. It says, the righteous runs into it, and they are safe. It says, his name, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Now, let me explain this to you. I would explain, you know, he didn't say the names of the Lord. He says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. So, what name is he talking about? That name, Jesus. Now listen, I, I understand so very much that you have the different names of God that I love so much. And the name of Jesus is what, you know, uh, that, that, you know, uh, encapsulates everything, covers every other name that you know. Whether you want to call him El Gibor, the great God, is in the name of Jesus. Whether you want to call him Mekadishkem, the sanctifier, is in that name, Jesus. Every name of God that you know is in
in that name Jesus. The other says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. You see, when you when, when there, there are challenges, you don't have provision, there's no money, there's nothing. The Bible says his name is Jehovah Jireh. You know, which means is the God that provides for you. You must know that name, understand that name. It's, it's, it's represented in the name of Jesus. It's represented in that name, Jesus. And you must, you must understand this that we're talking about, that everything, all the names of God in the Old Testament, we can begin to like take them one by one. I mean, El Roy, the God that sees, El Roy, the good shepherd, you know, I mean, El Gibor, the great God, you know, El Olam, the everlasting father. Just all those names you see, the Bible says, for God has given them a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things on earth, and on things underneath the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's important, you know, it says, you know, they confess that he is Lord, master and owner. No matter where the situation, where your challenge is, you have a name. You have a strong tower that you should learn to run to. You know, I was saying something this morning and you can see it happens even in our families. When the older child wants to, you know, beat the younger child, they run to their parents because their parents is a strong tower. They know when they get there, there is nothing the, the older child can do and they do faces to their brothers or their sister, yeah, yeah, you know, and that one is angry. Just imagine how angry the devil is every time we, we are eat in that strong tower. I was watching, you know, I saw a, a baby in the zoo that was seated and, you know, there's a lion behind, but of course it was a zoo, I mean, barricaded. It's a see-through uh, barricade, a glass. And the lion thought, I mean, wow, this is food, and jumped, you know. But thankfully, there was a barricade, a glass. You don't have to fear anything. When you are in the security of that strong tower, it doesn't matter. It's not the, the size of the enemy does not matter. It says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Well, as we begin to look at this, this tower, you, you begin to understand. The Bible calls it, there, there, there are some names that the Bible calls, there are some names in Scripture about the towers in Scripture that the Bible talked about. The Bible talked about a strong tower. It talked about the watch tower. It talked about the eye tower. And it's very, very instructive to understand that these things, I mean, it all represents the person of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That is who he is to us. You know, and you must, you must understand to operate most of these towers. You must learn to operate most of this tower. When the Bible says it is strong, it means it cannot be accessed or defeated. Inaccessible tower. The devil can try, like the lion try. Where that child is, was a place of security, is inaccessible. You know, it's beyond the reach of the devil. The only time you have issues if you wander away, if you enter the lion's den by yourself, then you know you have become meat. You know, you become, I mean, food for the lion. But as long as you stay in that place of security, nothing happens to you. And the Bible talks about, you know, the watchtower. And this is one place that is so important that we understand the watchtower. The watchtower. In Habakkuk 2, from verse 1, Habakkuk 2, verse 1, you know, it says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. And I will watch to see what he will say unto me. Now, you need a watchtower in the place of prayer. And we, we, we're going to be looking at these, these things so that you understand, you know, where we're going to. I mean, when you travel, a lot of us travel, we don't understand that there is a control, air traffic control tower. Where all, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the traffic that you see the flight traffic, the transitions and all that, you know, the, the, the landing and the takeoff where it is controlled and managed. There are some things in your life that you, you must manage the things that take off from your life. 
You must manage the things that land in your life. There must be a tower, a watchtower, a air traffic control tower in your life that is from the place of prayer you watch it. And most of the time, God will show you some of the things that happened. A lot of us are not sensitive enough to know that God is showing us what is happening. There must be a serious air control tower. You know, and most of the time, these towers are high up. And they are strong, strategically located. The position, their location is symbolic because it must be in a place, an area where you can see and monitor and manage everything. That's the place of prayer. That's what the Bible calls it a watchtower. You must learn to control the traffic in your life. The things that come in, whether from spiritual or from whatever angle, you must learn in the place of prayer to control. I don't know why you feel when you have not prayed for a bit, a day or so, you've not prayed like you want to. You would know because this is the signal point. You must learn to control those things. So you see planes flying and landing. It's not just because they want to land. You know, they queue up to land. They know their time. They must give you the signal and say, yes, you can land. If you're not giving the signal to land, you can't land. It's not because there's an airport that you land. You know, at times when you look at the things, you know, the Bible says the invisible things of God can be known by the things that are seen. That the things that are visible. You can know the things of God. You know, I was saying to someone who was asking me a question about once born again and forever safe. You know, I was traveling some few, few weeks ago. And I think God deliberately wanted to just instruct me and to show me something. You know, I was at the lounge. I was eating. And when they called and said, you are about to miss your flight. You know, they, they said, you are about to miss your flight. And I was like, I missed my flight. I still have time. I, I thought I still have, in short, I still had time. And by the time I started, you know, to run, it took about 10 minutes or more to run to the place where I was going to board, you know. And when I sat down eventually in the plane, I was just meditating and thinking, and the Spirit of God said to me, it's not everyone that is checked in that eventually will fly. Because you think you're born again, it does not mean you will fly. It's everyone that has boarded. Bible says, he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. So don't think that because you're born again and you can do anything you want to and you're secured. So it was a lesson for me. If the flight had gone, I'd missed it. You know, I mean, on this side of eternity, you can, they can rebook you on another flight. But that one, you must make sure you, you don't miss your flight. And it's so evident that the rapture of the church is coming. It is evident that the rapture of the church, there are so many teachings now that you hear that sounds good. They sound so good in so many ways. Be careful. You need to be very careful. You must, you must have that control in place. You know, it represents the watchtower. Isaiah 62 verse 6, I like this beat about that. That watchtower, Isaiah 62 verse 6, it says, I have set watchmen upon thy walls. O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence and give him no rest till he establish until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Listen, some of us, you know, you need to get in the place of prayer till your life becomes a praise in the earth. You know, you don't go to the top. He said, I've said to you as watchmen, watchmen are meant to be seated on the tower. And there are some things in your life that you have not seen yet. Yet, that you need to go in a place of prayer and pray to you. Don't give God rest. That's what the Bible is saying here. It says, I've set what men upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day or night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. It says, and give him no rest. Till he establish. There are some things that are not established yet in your life. And you're giving God rest. You're saying, mm. some of us, in short, he's not giving God rest. You're tired. He says, don't give him rest until 
Jerusalem becomes a praise in the heart. You know, in, in Ezekiel 3, verse 2, I like that bit as well. And in Ezekiel 3, was talking about um, from verse 1 and down, Ezekiel 3, if you can give, put it up for us, let's just praise the Lord. Okay, let me get it here. If we are not fast enough to get it. So he says, and again, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say to them, when I bring in the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchmen, if, he, if when he see the sword coming, see, you see the, 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 the job of, you know, the tower and the people that are set upon them. So I'm just showing you some examples that scripture gave about, you know, the towers, about some of these things that we need to understand. That we need to understand. The importance of, this, of, of, the, of, of, of the tower. One of the importance of the tower is for surveillance. Second Kings 19 2 Kings 9, verse 17. Second Kings 9, verse 17. Are we there? Okay, thank you. It says... And there stood a watchman on the tower in Jezreel and espied the company of Jehu as he came and said, I see a company. And Joram said, take an horseman and send to meet them and let him say, is it peace? And so there went one on horseback to meet him. And he said, thus said the king, is it peace? And Jehu said, what hast thou to do with peace? Turn thee behind me. And the watchman told saying the messenger came to them, but they commented not again. Now, you see, the place. They looked and they saw someone. It's a place of surveillance. So, you know, it's a, it's a place, you know, surveillance is the word used for close observation, detective work. And the, 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 the tower, though we call it strong tower, like I said, there are different kinds of tower. There is the eye tower. There is a watch tower. There is a strong tower. The tower is meant to be a place of surveillance. There are some things that are coming into your life that before they come in, you need to stay in the place of prayer and see. You see, some people come to your life just because of what they can get. Some people come with, di people come with different motives. But because we don't have surveillance in place, you can't see. They enter into your space. And they bring about destruction. You must know the reason why they are coming in. You know, you must from, your, from, from that tower know what to expect. A lot of people have built the tower of confusion. Babel. Babel is a tower of confusion. And that's where, where we get our information. We get our information from. It's a tower of confusion. You hear from this, you hear from this, you hear from this, you hear from that. I mean, it's only one voice you hear, you should hear from. Only one voice. Just imagine, I mean, the pilot flying in, and you have somebody calls from there so you can land. Another one calls, you cannot land. Another one calls from there, uh, you may land, and different. I mean, and that's how the life of some of us. And some of us is trial and error. Okay, I can't see any plane in front of me. Let me land. You don't have to see because, I mean, from the, the, the air traffic control tower, they see what you cannot see. 
Just like the lighthouse. Lighthouse is a tower for sheep those days. The navigation system has changed and it's a lot better now. They don't need the lighthouses again. They are very expensive to maintain. But from the lighthouse, you know, I mean, when you're getting, when the ship is getting close to a shallow water, I mean, getting close to places where you have rock, they put those signs on so that you can see that there's danger ahead. So you can see you're close, you know, to the shore. You're close so that you will not you know, damage the vessel. You must be able to survey in the place of prayer. Brothers and sisters, it's so important that we get to the place, in the place of prayer to be able to survey. That the, 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 the tower is not just for surveillance, it's for security and it's for safety. It says the name of the Lord is a strong tower, inaccessible tower, You can penetrate it easily. He says, the righteous runs into it. I said in this morning, you know, for a lot of us, you must understand that most of the time when you need the tower, you know, is to run to it. You don't walk to it. He says, the righteous runs to it. Something is pursuing you. Something is disturbing you. You know, I don't know if it happens to you. It happens to me where I just know that I need to pray. I just need to pray. It's not something you do. You run to it and hold on to the horns of the altar and say, Father, what, what is happening? And you begin to pray. It's a place of safety. When the devil is chasing you, you know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you see a dog chasing you. Do you know how you run to a place of safety? If you have to fly, jump over a, a gate, you will jump over to get to a place of safety. Whatever it is that you need, you need to do. There's some things that is happening. You see, if you hear people shooting, but you know, you look for the next place of safety. You look. You've not probably not been in danger. You know, a lot of us don't know. You know what we can do. You don't. You don't. You don't know your your, your capacity. The, you know. You don't know what you can do until you know you're faced with danger. You say, I can't run. By the time they tell you when the dog chases you and they measure it for you, uh, you discover be, there are so many people that can beat, um, what's his name, the man, the, uh, Hussein Bolt. There are so many people that can beat him. I, I guarantee you, you know, I probably might be able to beat him depending on what is chasing me. Depending on what is chasing you, you don't know what you can do. And until you get to that place, it's a place of security. It is a place of safety. I like the bit that it's not just a place of surveillance or safety and security. It's a place of signal. That's where you get the signals for your life. The signal. That's where they tell you, no, no, go. Don't. It's a control tower. The signal for your life. And God says, don't. Even though everything looks good. Even though everything looks well, Paul told them in Acts 27, he says, you know, I perceive that this ship, this vessel is going to be in arm's way. You know, he says, he, he perceived, he knew in the spirit. He had gotten signal from the tower. And he said, no, don't, don't sail. They looked at him, the captain looked at him. <laughs> he doesn't have any equipment to tell whether... The, it's going to be a fair weather or not. It's telling me, a captain, that I've, I've, been, I've applied this route for like how many years? What does he know? You know, he's only carrying Bible. He does not know anything. And they went. And exactly what Paul said was what they met on the way. Why? Because he was connected to the signal tower. Are you connected to that signal tower? Are you connected to it? Where do you get your signal from? Some of us, our signals are from our five senses. How you, how you feel. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sensory perception. We don't walk by how we feel. The signal that come from the senses. Nah, I just feel good. I feel bad. I mean, that is it. No, 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 no. If it's about all what you see, the Bible says, he that observeth the wind shall not sow. He that regarded the, the clouds 
you will not reap. If you look out and say, ah, it's like it's going to rain, you will not go out. Oh. If you look at the situations and circumstances around you, you will do nothing. If you, say, if you observe the wind, you will not sow. If you regard the clouds, you will not reap. And a lot of us, we observe the situations and circumstances. There will never be any perfect weather, perfect condition for you to do whatever it is that you want to do. Get the signal from the Spirit to do whatever it is you want to do. Let that signal come from the Spirit. Whatever decision you want to make, let it be a Spirit-led signal that you get. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, it's not just a place of signals. It's, it's a place of supervision. It's where you control from the top. It's on top. You can see things and control things. You know, control things. In the place of prayer, it's a place of control. And you need to know it. I like the bit. It says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. I, mean, I don't know if, you, if it's happened to you. You just worship God and just call those names. Just call those names. You, you, you discover the kind of lifting that comes. You discover there's something about the name of Jesus. There's something about that name. We have it as a strong tower. It's a place of refuge. It's a fortress. It's a, it's a shelter. That has been a shelter unto me. A strong tower for my enemy. Praise the Lord. Psalm, Second Samuel 22 verse 2 says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God of my rock in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. My eye tower and my refuge. My savior, thou savest me from violence. And that's, after that, that's where you have the song that says, I will call upon the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised? So shall I be saved from my enemies. Verse 4. It says, I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. And it says, when the waves of death come past me, the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrow of hell come past me about. The snare. You know, read what the strong tower does. When God is your strong tower, you, need to just, you read on and on and on and on, and you see how loaded it is. It's one that teaches our fingers to make war. It says, it's my goodness. My fortress, my eye tower, and my deliverer. Brothers and sisters, I mean, you, you, must, you must have a place that you run to. Because the challenges of life would happen. Trust me. Just like in a time of war, when you see the children of Israel running to, they have a designated place where they run to. When those missiles are coming, the missiles will come. Trust me, the missiles will come. The devil will throw his missiles. He will throw those things at you to stop you. The question I want to ask you today, do you have a strong tower? Do you have a place where not your friend, not your brother, not your sister, the arm of flesh will fail you. Man will fail you. The people will fail you. Pastor Sam will fail you. I mean, men generally will fail you. Your father, as much as they love you, they will fail you. Your mother, I mean, have you been in the place where you, you thought that your parents would be able to help you, you know, you, because you thought they were rich, they're this. Even they themselves, they need help. They need a strong tower. Don't look to any man. You must build that relationship with a tower, you know. That's why Jesus Christ, God said himself in, 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 in Isaiah 1 verse 18, he says, come now, let us reason. Come to this strong tower, let's reason together. He says, come to that level of my thinking. He says, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be as red as crimson, they shall be as wool. He says, if you be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. I want you to bow down your head at this time. 
I don't know. This is your heart of He says, yeah, my cry, oh, oh God, attend unto my prayers. From the hands of the earth will I cry unto you. When my heart is overwhelmed, please lead me to the rock that is higher than I am. Lead me to the rock. Lead me to that rock that is higher than I am. Lead me to that rock that is higher. When my heart is overwhelmed, Lord, please lead me to the rock that is higher than I am. Lead me to the rock that is higher than, than I am. My son, take great. Libra con the seed and lunch. Yes, Lord, when our heart is overwhelmed, Father God, lead us to the rock that is higher than we are. Lead us to that rock that is higher than we are. Ma con the son, take a tuncha. Lead on the santa great and loja. Lado crom the santa yadi de la. Ma lom the santa yada. Lead on crom the son to yon the lisa. Lado crom the santa yadi de de de. In a room the legacy in an indication Lea rom the Santa Gaida, Lado grom the Socati, Prato Longeria, Lado grom the Santa Gaida, the Conda, Ladi Bram the Santa Gaia, Lado grom the Santa Gaia, Lado grom the Santa Gaia, Pro Shadada, Lady the Grom the Santa Yadada. Yes, Lord, lead us to the rock that is higher than we are. Yes, lead us to the rock that is higher than we are. Marom the Shati Sadish. Father, we give you thanks. You are a strong tower. We know you are a strong tower. Lead us to that rock that is higher than us. When our heart is overwhelmed. Can I pray for everyone here? Whoever it is that is overwhelmed by the situations and circumstances of life. Lord, I pray that you lead them to that rock that is higher than they are. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' matchless name we have prayed. Amen. While we're still in the mode of, of prayer and worship, let's just pray for our pastor tonight as he has watered us, as he has shared the word of life with us, that the Holy Spirit should release fresh unction upon him. The Lord should refill him with fresh anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. Every virtue that has gone out of him, that the Lord should refill it in multiple folds in the mighty name of Jesus. And the word that we have also heard tonight, that the word should profit us in the mighty name of Jesus. The world will not be like that seed that is sown by the wayside or the one that fell among tons and it was shook. But the world will, will land on a good soil in our hearts and the world will do us good in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you're a wonderful God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Good evening, church. That was a wonderful one. Let's appreciate Jesus once again. Let's appreciate Jesus. And at this time now, we'll be giving our offering. Let's appreciate God with our substance. Uh, we can see the, uh, the details on screen. So if you're also joining us online, this is an opportunity for you to appreciate God in the place of thanksgiving and through your resources. Uh, you can also be a part of our building project, which is still ongoing. And the other project we're also doing, we, we have a wonderful project where we bless the less privileged uh, outside the country. Please, you can also be a part of that. And as we are doing that, let me quickly run through our announcements our weekly activities all remain the same every morning except tuesday mornings we meet 6 a.m online uh, for ruling by prayer and the monday nights we have monday night prayers 11 p.m and every wednesday just like today we meet in church 6 30 p.m for digging deep and tomorrow thursday every other thursday we have uh, the faith clinic 6 30 p.m and that's online only and this every Sunday, the order of our service, Evolve service starts 8.55 a.m., the Sunday school, 10, 10 o'clock, and then our celebration service, the second service starts 10.30 a.m. But it's a wonderful one this Sunday. is the first Sunday in the month of April. The Lord has seen us through the first quarter, and we're in the second quarter. Let's appreciate God. Let's appreciate God. Let's clap for Jesus. And so we'll be holding our Thanksgiving service on Sunday starting 10.30 a.m., 
But remember, the Sunday school starts 10 o'clock. Please endeavor to be a part of that. And we want to also let us know in the month of April, some wonderful things are happening. So as a part of the Thanksgiving service, if you are having your uh, wedding anniversary in the month of April, you're having your birthday, or there is any wonderful thing you're celebrating, the media team has asked you to reach out to them. You can send in your pictures and your messages so that they can include this in the service. Uh, please, and the deadline is uh, Friday, the 5th of April. Please send it in early so that it can be a part of the service. And this to all the workers in the church. We are having our first workers meeting in the second quarter next Saturday. That is the 13th, not the 6th of April, but 13th of April. Further information will be sent across to us. Let's mark that day out in our calendar, Saturday the 13th of April. And this is from the team, uh, the running team in the church, the running club, the marathon team. Sister Kenya and um, my father's house running club, they will be participating in the Manchester Marathon taking place on the 21st of April. Uh, that's two Sundays away. We can support them financially by funding the GoFundMe paid details that has been provided. I think that page has been sent across at various, various social media groups. So please endeavor to be a part of that. It's also an avenue to appreciate God. And then the last piece of information here tonight, uh, the Festival of Life is coming to Manchester. It's a glorious one. Let's appreciate Jesus. Let's appreciate Jesus. On the 26th of April from 7 p.m., we are going to have our Father in the Lord, Pastor here at the Boye, uh, live in Manchester for the Festival of Life. If you're familiar with the Holy Ghost Service in Nigeria, the UK version is called the Festival of Life. So usually we go to London Excel Center to have that. But it's coming to Manchester now. It's an opportunity for you to be a part of that life-changing event. And not only you, invite your family, invite your friends, invite your neighbors, invite your colleagues at work, and also invite a stranger. So there, are, there is a multiple pool of people you can always bring to that program to take part in that life-changing event on the 26th of April. At this point, we're going to close the service as we go. I want us to bow down our heads and just tell the Lord, Father, as I go the remaining part of this week, I want to see you in a new way. I want to see you in a new light. Do something great in my life. Use vehicle of blessing to other people in the mighty name of Jesus. Use me to bless others mightily. Use me as a vessel in your hand. Do glorious things through me in the mighty name of Jesus. And the word that I've heard to the almighty God, let it come alive in my life. I want to see you as a strong tower in my life. And I want to be defended from every effort or every target of the enemy. Defend me mightily as I run into you and I had in you. Thank you, Father, because you are a wonderful God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. As a church, let's share the grace together. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely the Lord's goodness and mercy is following me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Good night.